Hi everyone, welcome to another one of our community Q&A videos. In this week's video, I'm gonna be responding to a question that we received as a private message on Facebook from Marie, and it's around the use of the COVID-19 vaccines in people living with multiple sclerosis. So firstly, I just wanna say that nothing that's discussed in this video should be taken as any sort of personal medical advice. As always, if you have any concerns about your own personal health in relation to these vaccines, this is something that should be discussed with your healthcare professional and your neurologist. All of the major MS organizations around the world have published guidelines about the use of these vaccines for people living with multiple sclerosis. And the general consensus is that there is a recommendation that people living with MS should be receiving a COVID-19 vaccine. Now the links to all of these guidelines can be found on the MS Translate website and we'll provide a link to that page in the comments section below the video. But mostly what I'm going to be discussing now is some more published research that's come out as more and more people living with MS around the world have received this vaccine. But before we do that I guess what we need to discuss first is just what we're expecting to see as a general response to these vaccines. So the whole principle behind how these vaccines work is that upon receiving the vaccine, an immune response should be generated. And this immune response is there so that if a person has a COVID-19 infection after they are vaccinated, uh, the outcomes of that uh, infection should be less severe. So the vaccine provides a little bit of protection. So the first published study that we have on this came from an Israeli group that looked at four groups of people living with multiple sclerosis and the response that they generated upon receiving the Pfizer vaccine. So the four groups of people were people living with MS that were currently not taking any disease modifying therapies. There was also a group on cladribine or Mavenclad, a group on Fingolimod or Jelenia, and a group on Ocrelizumab or Ocrevus. And so what they saw is that in the group of people who weren't on any disease modifying therapies and the people on Maven clad, they generated a really strong antibody response uh, to the vaccine. So what we would expect. However, in people on uh, Jelenia and on Ocrevus, they saw a much lower response uh, in relation to receiving the vaccine. Now it was unclear at that stage whether or not the response that they generated even though it was lower, was still enough to provide protection. And with a lot of the data that we're talking about in this video, it's all still very preliminary. And so we need to know more. It's just about providing an update. More recently, there has been uh, a study published out of the University of Pennsylvania. And so they replicated this, the findings found in that Israeli study, and they found that in particular, people on anti-B cell therapies, so this is rituximab and ocrelizumab, had a significantly decreased antibody response uh, to the vaccine. So the same results that were seen in that Israeli study. However, interestingly, what they found is that despite those results, these individuals were still able to generate quite a meaningful T cell response. And so it's possible that the T cell response that they generate is able to provide them protection from a COVID-19 infection. However, again, this is all still very preliminary and we're trying to understand these results better. In fact, just this morning, we've also seen another publication come out from a large Italian cohort looking at how they respond to the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines across different therapies. Now, again, they saw that people on B-cell therapies had a much lower response, uh, antibody response generated to these vaccines. However, interestingly, they saw that while it was still lower, people that received the Moderna vaccine seemed to generate a higher response than those that received the Pfizer vaccine. So we're starting to get more and more information regarding the use of these vaccines and people living with multiple sclerosis across different therapies, but it is still an evolving story. So the important thing here is just to continue to listen out to updates. And as I said, have these discussions with your neurologist if you're at all concerned about your own personal situation. At MS Translate, we are continuing to monitor this situation as we know that it is incre uh, incredibly important information for our community and we will publish updates as soon as we do see them. Now, there was another part of this question that related to whether or not people living with multiple sclerosis had uh, experienced relapses in response to receiving the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, it is important to say that across the large cohort of people living with multiple sclerosis that have received these vaccines, 
they have been found to be generally safe. Now, there have been a couple of case reports indicating that some people living with multiple sclerosis have had a relapse uh, after receiving the vaccine. However, we really need to keep this in perspective. One, these have been very isolated case reports. And two, we don't really have the information yet to link these directly to the vaccines. We can't say at this stage whether or not it was in a, as a response to the vaccine or whether this is just a relapse that would have happened anyway. Again, we know that this is really important information. And so as more is published, uh, we will provide updates on that. But there is no real indication at the moment to suggest that there is a safety concern around the use of these vaccines for people living with MS. And again, continue to refer back to the guidelines uh, reported by MS organisations around the world for this information. The last thing that I'd want to say on this is just to make sure that you are accessing really high quality information when it comes to this. As I know that personally, I have already seen a number of media reports that have provided uh, quite inaccurate reporting of what has been seen in the published literature around the use of these vaccines for people living with multiple sclerosis. If you do see anything uh, online that you're at all concerned about, and you would like our information on, please don't hesitate to contact us and I'll be happy to give you my thoughts on that. As always, if you have any questions about this video, please do comment below and I'll make sure that I respond to any questions that we receive. Thanks for your interest and stay tuned for our next video in this series next week. Thanks everyone.